Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tiffany and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a grocery haul from H-E-B today, as well as, <laughs> it's my son, Jackson. We're having a pajama day. Come here. Say hi. Hi. And we're gonna be sharing a meal plan, so. A meal plan for the week. So this, I recorded this last week, starting last week on Super Bowl Sunday. So that's gonna be one of our meal plan days. So this is what we have for our meal plan. We've got the chicken and dips for Super Bowl, Mississippi roast, orange chicken, pork chops, leftovers, and pizza for Friday. And we eat out on Saturdays typically. <laughs> Okay, yes, my five-year-old is obsessed with poo-poo. I don't know if anybody else has a five-year-old little boy, but he is obsessed with poo-poo. So, all right, so stick around, you guys, if you guys want to check out what my meal plan is for the week. And poo-poo. <laughs> okay, so here we have some orange juice and some milk for the week. And we also have some deli cheese, deli meat for lunches, and a loaf of bread, some frozen cauliflower rice. My husband's doing the keto diet right now, so we're trying to appeal towards that. And, and then here's some frozen breakfast sausage for a quick breakfast add-on in the morning. And some frozen green beans to go with some meals. Uh, 36 count eggs and some frozen cauliflower mashed potatoes uh, we haven't tried these yet so hopefully they're good i got this for my husband because we will be eating these mashed potatoes when i make some mississippi roast and didn't want him to feel left out <laughs> so here's some shredded cheese we'll be making our own frozen pizzas or, or, or i guess with frozen pizza crust so we'll be making some cauliflower pizzas we already have pepperoni and some pasta sauce to use for that, so I just needed the shredded mozzarella. And then some shredded cheese. Um, need a little extra for a dip that we're gonna be making for Super Bowl. And some string cheese, we're almost out. My kids live off these in the morning, every morning they have to have one of these, the Danimals, so we're almost out of those. And also have the au jus gravy mix seasoning and the ranch seasoning. That's gonna be for the Mississippi roast. And I got these bagels. Makes me feel a little less guilty about eating bagels, I guess. So just for a quick, easy breakfast in the morning. Um, got some whipped cream cheese to go with that. And some sour cream. That's gonna be for a Super Bowl dip. And some cottage cheese for my husband. Some chocolate hummus. I thought that sounds kind of good to have with some, like a sweet treat with some graham crackers. We'll see if the kids like those. And a few Lunchables for the kids. Got four of those, just for easy lunches. And some shredded chicken for the buffalo chicken dip. We're out of olive oil, so I had to get some of that. And I'm also gonna be making an apple pie, or a apple cake, apple dump cake. So that's for that recipe. And then also had to get some this, we're not gluten free, but whenever I can find something, I feel like it's just a little bit better for us. So, some yellow cake mix. And some tater tots. I recently found out my daughter, who's two, she won't eat anything, but she loved Sonic tater tots yesterday. So, I know it's not the healthiest choice for her, but anytime I can get food in her belly, it's a win for us. So. And this is Frank's Red Hot. That's going to be for the buffalo chicken dip. And ranch dressing, we're almost out of that. So we're also going to use that in some recipes and just to have with salads. And some orange marmalade. I'm going to be making uh, orange chicken in the crock pot. So you'll see that recipe in a little bit here. And some cream cheese. This is going to be for the buffalo chicken dip and also for a taco dip we're making for Super Bowl gonna be kind of like a dip day <laughs> we're just gonna have a bunch of appetizers that's gonna be our dinner pretty much and we're almost out of butter six of butter and the kids love these pineapple chunks with breakfast so get some of those and some stevia we're almost out of that for our coffee 
And then this is some chicken broth that we got. Um, we have a dog that's a little bit older, and so it's hard for him to eat the hard dog food. But he's getting overweight, so the soft dog food isn't the best option for him. So we got some of this to put over his dog food. We also don't know where they put that. We got him some Beneful Healthy Weight. So we're going to pour that over and maybe let it soften up a little bit. My husband's great idea. And that might help him eat that a little bit easier. And we're almost out of coffee. So more coffee. Some chips, wavy chips, just as a special indulgence for Super Bowl Sunday to go with our dips. And we're almost out of frozen waffles for the kids. Quick breakfast in the morning which we really love to have quick breakfast. We have a two-year-old, a five-year-old, and a two-month-old, and doing virtual learning with a five-year-old. So it's kind of hectic in the mornings. So, And then this is for me and my husband. We'll have this on Friday night for dinner. This is the cauliflower pizza crust. This is the best one that we've found. We've tasted quite a few. We've also tried the ones that are pre-made pizzas that are cauliflower pizzas. And I just prefer the taste of making my own. So I use this, some jarred pasta sauce, usually Bertoli, and some shredded mozzarella and pepperoni. And we bake that. So I'll show you guys that as well when we make that. And then also this is going to be for the kids on Friday night. They get the, the yummy good pizza, the French bread pizzas. So. That's all. I obviously, I need a bigger island because then all my groceries will fit. So my husband said he's going to work on that. And here's some chicken thighs, package of that. And that'll be for our dinner, for our orange chicken dinner. And then a package here has the, I think it's chuck roast. That's going to be for the Mississippi roast. And my husband wanted this Italian sausage to put in with his eggs in the morning. And two packages of bacon, one just to have in the fridge in case we want to do breakfast for dinner one night. And then another is going to be also for um, a breakfast casserole I'm making. And also the rest of it's going to be for a dip. So for a Super Bowl. And then some turkey hot dogs for the kids for lunches. Mix things up a little bit. And then last but not least, our produce. So my kids love apples. So we have a bunch in the fridge right now, but those probably won't last that long. So got some extra apples. And cotton candy grapes. My kids, they like grapes once in a while, but I think my son really likes these. I really like these. So I feel like these are gonna get eaten up quicker than regular grapes. So they're my favorite kind. And then I got two packages of baby carrots, one to roast with a dinner this week with a Mississippi roast. And then one just to have for snacking, maybe dipping into the dip on Super Bowl. And then some more bananas, although we didn't do so great on eating the bananas from last week. I'll probably make some banana muffins out of those before those go completely bad. And then got some strawberries, some raspberries, blackberries, just for breakfast fruits. And some sweet potatoes that I got just to have um, an extra carb with dinners for me and the kids and then some celery we can use that we'll chop that up and use that to dip so we won't be eating chips the entire time so we can get some veggies in with our super bowl snacks and then a tomato for the dip that i'm going to be making and then this is our favorite me and my husband's favorite salad to have with our pizza our cauliflower pizza on Fridays. So it's the sweet Thai salad from H-E-B. It's our favorite. I mean, we eat this every single week with our pizza. So could eat that forever, every Friday. And then this is green onions here for the dip that I'll be making. Avocados just to have either for breakfast or lunch, or just to, you know, add on to our meals. And then some salad. It's just always good to have salad in the fridge, just in case for an extra veggie with dinners. And this is going to be the special treat breakfast. I always like to have a fun Friday breakfast for the kids just to kind of celebrate. Yay, we made it through the week. So we'll have our donut holes there. So I think that's it. So, so the first meal that I'm showing you is going to be for Super Bowl Sunday. This is what we had. We just did a bunch of appetizers. So we're starting off with the buffalo chicken dip. 
And these are the ingredients that I used for it. And that's my little helper, Jessa. She's almost three, so she's really into helping mommy cook. So I'm putting in two cups of rotisserie chicken into my KitchenAid mixer. And it calls for two cups of chicken breast, but I just got the prepackaged rotisserie chicken. Just saves a little bit of time. And I'm going to put everything here in the KitchenAid mixer that we're using and mix it all up. It just makes it easier to combine everything that's included in the dip. And to that I'm adding one package. It's an 8 ounce package of softened cream cheese. And it calls for one cup of Frank's Red Hot, but I like to use half a cup. It's a little less spicy that way. And also one cup of ranch dressing. Like we ran out there, so we gotta open up a new one. And one cup of shredded ch cheese. I used the Mexican cheese, it's just what we had in our fridge. So I just eyeballed it. So we're gonna mix it all together with the KitchenAid mixer. And once that's all mixed together, I'm going to spray a baking dish. I just used my smaller casserole dish that I have. And I'm going to put everything from the dip that I mixed together into that dish. And spread it out, kind of even it out there. And I'm just going to top it off with a little bit of mozzarella, shredded mozzarella cheese, just to add a little bit of flavor, a little depth to the flavor there. The original recipe didn't really call for that, but I think it's fun to kind of make everything your own when you're cooking. You can never go wrong. Unless you're baking. Sometimes you can go wrong with that, so... And you want to bake it in the oven at 350 for 25 minutes. And here's our finished product. Golden brown. Delicious. It's delicious. So I'm just going to rinse some celery, chop some celery up. So we like to use celery, dip that in, or we also eat it with carrot sticks is really good. And chips, of course, but we were trying to be somewhat healthy, have some vegetables mixed in there since this is supposed to be our dinner. But I decided for Super Bowl we would do appetizers for dinner. Be kind of fun, something different. And my kids are five, two, and two months, so we really don't stay up and watch the Super Bowl with them since it starts close to their bedtime. Usually that's around their dinner time, it's like five or five thirty, so. We thought we would just make this for dinner and record the game. Okay, and I'm going to be cooking some chicken drumsticks as well to add to the dinner, the appetizer dinner. So I'm going to use my air fryer and I'm preheating it at 400 for two minutes. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to prep the chicken drumsticks. So I'm just using a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper and garlic powder. So I've done this before with chicken wings and they come out really great in the air fryer, kind of crispy, kind of crunchy, but a lot healthier than actually frying chicken wings. So I thought I would just do this with drumsticks so they'd be like giant chicken wings, kind of sticking with the appetizer Super Bowl theme. But I just happened to have these in my freezer. I had ordered from a Target pickup, I had ordered chicken wings to do for a Saturday a few weeks back. 
and they ended up giving me drumsticks so I just stuck them in the freezer and they're coming in handy now so So I'm just gonna seal the bag and kind of move the chicken around. Get all the seasonings all over the chicken. And I'm gonna spray my air fryer with nonstick cooking spray. And I'm gonna put the chicken wings in there or the drumsticks in there. And you want to make sure that they're in an even layer because they'll crisp a lot nicer that way if they're not on top of each other. So I'm going to put them in the air fryer at 400 and I'm going to start it at 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, I'm going to flip them and then put them in for 15 more minutes. My husband stepped in because I had to nurse the baby. So he's checking the temperature, make sure that they're at the right temperature. I think it's 165 for chicken. And just to make sure, and this is after a total of 25 minutes in the air fryer. So they came out pretty beautiful. And this is everything that I made for the Super Bowl meal. Um, that dip right there with the bacon on top, that's a taco dip. I got the recipe from Brianna K. She's one of my favorite YouTubers that I follow. So I tried to record making that, but my camera messed up. And same thing happened with this apple dump cake. So I'll try to do a different video. Those both came out really good though. So this is the recipe I used for Mississippi Roast. This is what we had on Monday. So these are the ingredients that we used. First I start off by spraying my slow cooker with nonstick cooking spray and I used a chuck roast and sprinkled it with the ranch seasoning packet and the au jus gravy mix packet. It's a really easy dump and go recipe. It's one of my favorites and my family loves it. And it calls for six tablespoons of unsalted butter. So I just used a few slices of what we had left in an open packet in the fridge. And the recipe calls for five to six pepperoncinis, so it just use as many as you prefer. It's kind of to your liking. Okay, and the recipe says to cook it on low for eight hours. So I usually try to go as long as I can, but if I've gotten the meal started a little bit too late, I'll kind of do a countdown until dinner time and just cook it as long as I can basically so it'll also be ready for dinner. So today I only had seven and a half hours before it was time for dinner so that's what we went with. And for the sides where this is closer to dinner time I'm gonna make something quick and easy. I always like to do frozen veggies for the sides. So I'm doing frozen peas and carrots and then Bob Evans mashed potatoes. And that's my son in the background, my oldest son. And while the peas and carrots are cooking, we'll check on the Mississippi roast, see how it came out. And it smelled so good opening that lid. It's just super buttery and rich tasting. So I usually use uh, this tool that I've had for years. It's for, 
uh, like kind of separating ground beef when you're making tacos or something like that. But I can I also use it to shred chicken or roast any kind of meat. So it holds up really well. So I just went ahead and used that so I can kind of shred it pretty quickly in the crock pot. I find it works better than using forks. So this came out so tender. As you can see, it shreds so easily, even just with this tool that I'm using. My husband's doing the keto diet, so he couldn't have the mashed potatoes. So I got him these frozen cauliflower mashed potatoes by Bird's Eye. And he said they ended up tasting pretty good. So I'm draining the peas and carrots and getting those all ready to go for dinner. And I'm just going to add a little bit of butter to the peas and carrots and season them with a little bit of salt and pepper. And here you have Monday night's dinner. Super easy. So for Tuesday, we had pork chops. So I'm going, I'm heating a pan over medium high heat and adding a little bit of olive oil. And I'm going to brown the pork chops in here first before I bake them in the oven. And just going to season the pork chops with some salt and pepper on both sides. Wait, no, that's not true. I actually, I, sometimes I use salt and pepper, but this time I ended up using the Montreal steak seasoning. So I know we're not having steak, but I like this seasoning for just about any kind of meat, steak or chicken. Sometimes I even put it on vegetables that I roast in the oven. So I think it's kind of my go-to. It has all the seasonings that I like in it combined into one. So once the pan is nice and hot, I'm going to throw these on and just for a couple minutes on each, each side, just so they get a nice little bit of a sear. And I find that it holds in the flavor a lot more if, rather than just baking them in the oven. So it keeps them juicier when you do bake them in the oven. And just so they don't dry out in the oven, I'm just adding a splash of chicken broth. Sometimes I use apple juice. I find that that enhances the flavor a little bit, but we were out, so chicken broth it was. And I'm gonna use my meat thermometer. This is the most amazing gadget ever. It just takes all the guesswork when you're cooking meat. So I use it for salmon or chicken or pork chops, roast, anything that I'm cooking in the oven that's a meat, I'll use this. So I just stick it into the thickest part all the way through there and it plugs in to this little reader that I'll show you in just a second here. And you can set the temperature that you want it to cook to on this little reader. I've set it to 145 and this starts beeping whenever the meat reaches that temperature. So I went ahead and cooked those at 400. And I didn't even put a timer on, I just used that meat thermometer. So I think it took about 20 to 30 minutes. So I didn't exactly time it, but you're supposed to be cooking it for 20 to 30 minutes. And as one of the sides, I'm gonna make tater tots in the air fryer. So I'm gonna spray with nonstick cooking spray and I'll put them at 400 for 20 minutes in the air fryer. It's a good idea to check on them pretty frequently to make sure they don't burn. So you'll wanna kinda of shake the basket a little every five minutes or so. Just keep a close eye on those. My husband's entertaining the kids in the playroom. He's the best. I couldn't get dinner done without him some days. And for our vegetable, we're gonna be having frozen green beans. Frozen is the, my favorite way to go for vegetables. And looks like the pork chops are done. 
So you want to bake them. If you don't have one of these meat thermometers, you're going to want to bake them for about 20 to 30 minutes, checking them just to make sure you don't dry them out. And here they are right out of the oven. So I'll let them rest a little bit while the rest of dinner is getting prepared. Okay, and I'm just gonna get my green beans ready. I'm just gonna do the same thing, add a little butter as I do with all my vegetables and some salt and pepper. And my daughter is obsessed with helping me put salt on food. Whenever she sees me bust out the salt, she has to help. So I try to give her just a little bit usually, but she's, she goes for it all. So <laughs> hopefully those didn't come out too salty. And I also added a little bit of garlic powder as well. And it looks like the tater tots are done. They're beautifully golden brown. I love the way air, things come out in the air fryer. And here's everything plated. Here's our kids' plates. She's ready. She's already getting into those tater tots. <laughs> and this is the Valentine cake that the kids helped me make earlier. So I figure we make it earlier in the week so that way we can have it all week long for Valentine's week. And this next recipe is for crock pot orange chicken. So these are the ingredients that I'm using. So I'm going to start off by spraying my crock pot with nonstick cooking spray. And I'm going to put some chicken thighs or you can use chicken breasts, whichever you prefer. And I'm going to season my chicken with some salt and pepper. And on the chicken, you're going to add two tablespoons of soy sauce. You can also use the amino. I know that's kind of a healthier version. We were out of that. And you'll add three fourths cup of barbecue sauce. I love the sweet baby Ray's barbecue sauce. That's my go-to every time. and three fourths cup of orange marmalade. And you'll want to spread that over the chicken as evenly as possible. And you're gonna cook this on low for six hours. And I'll be serving this with frozen broccoli and I'm reheating the tater tots from last night's dinner. So they actually came out nice and crisp the next day. So that's another good tip. So if you want to reheat leftover tater tots or french fries, the air fryer is the way to go because it'll crisp them right back up and they'll taste just as good as new. So I was going to make brown rice with this meal, but I was running out of time. So mom life. All right, and here's the orange chicken. Show you how it came out after six hours in the crock pot. And I'm gonna shred it in the crock pot so all the juices 
can combine with the chicken and let it sit for just a few minutes to let the chicken soak up some more of those juices. And I'm going to season my broccoli here with some butter, salt, and pepper. Surprise, surprise. And we can't forget the garlic powder. And checking on those reheated tater tots. Came out perfect. I'm going to sprinkle on some cornstarch onto the chicken and mix it in there really well. So I find that that thickens up the sauce a little bit. And here we have Wednesday's dinner. Super easy, dump and go. And this is Friday's dinner. We're going to do a cauliflower pizza. This is just for the grown-ups after the kids have gone to bed. Here's what I'm using. And so we're going to do a cauliflower pizza crust. And put some olive oil. And sprinkle some Italian seasoning and garlic powder just to add some flavor to the cauliflower crust. I know sometimes it can taste a little bit bland if you don't do that. So this is my favorite cauliflower crust that we use. I think it's called Life on the Veg. We've tried a lot of different ones. This one comes out the best. And I'm just going to spread that. We've also tried different pre-made cauliflower pizzas. But I always feel like they lack a lot of flavor, so I, I just prefer to make it myself. So I'm just putting some leftover pizza sauce onto the pizza and spreading it around. So I know I didn't mention a meal for Thursday. Thursday is usually our leftover night, so we either have leftovers if we have a lot of leftovers in the fridge, or we kind of do a dig through of the freezer and pantry and see what we can come up with or breakfast for dinner. So it's one of those three options. So usually we have plenty of food for that. Just put a little more sauce on. Okay, and I'm going to add shredded mozzarella. I'm just going to eyeball it. There's not really a measurement that I use. Just whatever looks good to me. Now I'm adding some turkey pepperoni. Some black olives. and some pickled jalapenos. And I'll be baking it in a preheated oven that's preheated to 425 for 11 minutes. And that gives it a really nice crispy crust. It's the perfect amount of time, but obviously it will vary by your oven. But that's what works for us. And here's how it came out. And this is our favorite salad that we always have on the side. It's the sweet Thai salad from HEB. And here's our Friday night dinner. Pizza Friday. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed this video please subscribe and don't forget to like the video and let me know in the comments below if you'd like more videos like this in the future or any kind of videos that you guys would prefer to see. Just let me know. Thank you. Have a great week.